The gaming industry in recent years has gone from strength to strength, with last year the industry generating an estimated $180.3 billion. With it being so accessible to everyone, and with purchases being made within the games, sometimes using cryptocurrencies, it made me think, can the gaming industry be used to move laundered money from one person to another without being detected? In today's video, we will be taking a look at how the gaming industry has grown over the years, how it's been used to launder money, and what the gaming industry is doing to tackle its money laundering problem. Hello, and welcome to another KYC Lookup video, where we bring you AML related content to help you enhance your knowledge in the fight against money laundering. Before diving into today's video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a comment with any suggested topics you would like us to cover in the future. We also have a special announcement to make, so be sure to watch until the end to find out what it is. So, on to today's video. If you're new to this channel, then let's quickly run through the definition of money laundering. Money laundering is the process of concealing the origins of money, often obtained from illicit activities, such as drug trafficking, corruption, embezzlement, or gambling, by converting it into a legitimate source. Some of the ways to do this is by the structuring of large amounts of money into multiple small transactions at banks, often called smurthing, the use of foreign exchanges, and cash smugglers and wire transfers to move money across borders. How has the gaming industry grown over the years? As kids, we all remember playing with the Atari 2600 or the Nintendo. I remember being glued to games such as Mario Brothers or Space Invaders in the 90s. But since then, the games have become so realistic and totally immersive and now with the introduction of the metaverse, paying and selling in a virtual capacity has become the norm. Let's delve a little more and take it back to the 1970s, when Atari introduced the first arcade game of Pong that kick-started the gaming craze. The arcade table tennis game was a sensation, drawing in consumers eager to play and companies that started to produce their own knockoff versions. Seeing the success of the arcade game, Atari then developed their own at-home console version of the same game in 1975. And then the Atari 2600 home console in 1977, which would become the first console to sell more than a million units. Arcade machines started to be installed everywhere, and new franchises like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong drove further growth. By 1982, arcades were already generating more money than both the pop music industry and the box office. From 1985 to 2000, eager to capitalise on a growing home console market, Atari licensed extremely high product ports of Pac-Man and a game adaptation of E.T., the extraterrestrial. They were rushed to market, released in poor quality, and cost the company millions in returns, and more in brand damages. As other companies also looked to capitalise on the market, other poor attempts at games and consoles caused a downturn across the industry. At the same time, personal computers were becoming the new flavour of gaming, especially with the release of the Commodore 64 in 1982. In the coming years, Nintendo would release the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, home console in 1985, prioritising high quality games and consistent marketing to recapture the wearing market. On the backs of games like Duck Hunt, Excitebike and the introduction of Mario in Super Mario Bros., the massive success of Nintendo revived the console market. Electronics maker Sony released the PlayStation in 1994, which used CD-ROMs instead of cartridges to enhance storage capacity for individual games. 
it became the first console in history to sell more than 100 million units. And the focus on software formats would carry on with the PlayStation 2, with DVDs, and PlayStation 3, with Blu-rays. Present day mobile devices have catapulted the gaming industry from tens of billion dollars to hundreds of billion dollar industry, with Apple's iPhone that solidified the transition of gaming to a mobile platform. The company's release of the App Store for its smartphones, followed closely by Google's own store for Android devices, paved the way for app developers to create free, paid, and paper feature games catered to a mass market. Now everyone has their eyes on that growing $85 billion mobile slice of the gaming market. How is the gaming industry used to launder money? Gaming back in the day was purely for entertainment value. And even though it is probably still the same case today for the majority of people, criminals have also found a way to use it to funnel dirty cash from one place to another, making it clean. The problem is, is that the gaming industry has grown to such a degree that there is currently little or no regulation. So launderers are using this to their advantage. For example, in 2013, cybercrime analyst Jean-Louis Richet wrote in a report titled Laundering Money Online, a review of cybercriminal methods, that microtransactions are what attracts criminals to the world of online video gaming. A criminal may download a free online game on their PC, phone or tablet, then proceed to create a character or an avatar. Alternatively, they can also hack an already existing account to further protect their identity. The criminal will then channel the proceeds of illegal activity or stolen credit card into the game and convert the money to the game's currency. Inside the game, they will buy rare weapons or power up their characters through microtransactions, then sell their characters or their stash of in-game virtual currency at a discounted price on secondary market websites such as eBay, player auctions, G2G or IG Vault. Most online games only allow the player to acquire items through microtransactions meaning that most currencies, skins or weapons can be bought with fees that are below $200. This allows criminals to cover their traces easily and not draw attention to themselves. In October 2019, it was reported by Vice that loot boxes were being used to launder money. Loot boxes are virtual boxes that contain a random assortment of weapons and skins, both valuable and not that a player can obtain during matches with other players. To open the loot boxes, the player must purchase them using real money. Loot boxes and keys can be traded between players in the Stream Marketplace, one of the largest online gaming retailers. Vice reported that 90% of transactions worldwide related to loot boxes were carried out for the laundering of illicit funds. Loot boxes have now been deemed as a form of gambling, as you are using real money at a gamble to receive in-game items. Loot boxes have become so much of a problem that in 2018, Belgium considered them in violation of gambling legislation and has banned their use in the country. The failure to comply may lead to a fine of €800,000 and up to five years in prison for the publishers of the game. What is the gaming industry doing to tackle money laundering? In June of 2019, the FATF, Financial Action Task Force, added an interpretive note to Recommendation 15 to virtual asset activities and service providers, particularly related to money laundering and terrorist financing. The note puts forth approaches to regulate and supervise virtual asset service providers, VASPs. A game company that sells virtual currencies may be considered a VASP. Many disagree with this notion, 
stating that money in-game items are not intended to be traded or sold on unauthorized third-party websites, and that game developers shouldn't bear the burden of AML CFT regulation. However, since July of 2019, Linden Lab, the developers of Second Life, have taken a stance and are now asking all its players to register and identify themselves as part of their AML obligations. This includes submitting a government-issued photo ID, a proof of address, and answers to ID verification questions. The company is also engaging a senior compliance analyst following the scandal in August of 2019, in which a member of the compliance department exposed Linden Lab security and AML programs. As the gaming industry continues to grow, more AML programs will need to be implemented to try and slow down the ever-growing money laundering problem within its industry. With an estimated 2.6 billion active gamers worldwide, it's been easy for criminals to fade into the background and launder their proceeds. One company taking the ball by the horns and offering their services to tackle the problem is Shifty Pro. Shifty Pro verifies users through digital KYC services and perform background checks in under 60 seconds to prevent fraud and identity theft. Their vision is to make IDV seamless and 100% accurate to fight multifaceted fraud. Shifty Pro identity verification can be performed anywhere in the world in milliseconds. As each year passes, regulators will become more active in clamping down on illegal activity, slowly transforming an unregulated sector into a vigilant and AML compliant industry in the future. Well, there you have it. How the gaming industry has grown over the years, how it's been used to launder money, and what the gaming industry is doing to tackle its money laundering problem. Please tell us in the comments section what other methods money launderers are using to move their cash, and if you think the gaming industry is doing all it can to tackle the problem. Now for the special announcement mentioned at the start of the video. We have now launched our very own courses for you to take a more in-depth look at a variety of subjects, such as introduction to AML, beneficial ownership, and customer risk rating, for example. So make sure you visit our website for further details and let us help you connect the dots in KYC. Thank you for watching the video. And if you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more amazing videos.